Einen wunderschönen guten Morgen und herzlich willkommen zum Pentao User Meeting 2022. Mein Name ist Stefan Müller. Wir sind hier live aus dem Filmstudio der IT Novum. Und ja, ich habe das Vergnügen, die Veranstaltung heute zum neunten Mal moderieren zu dürfen. Was verbirgt sich oder was ist die Idee des Pentao User Meetings? Wir möchten hier gerne eine Plattform geben für einen Austausch rund um die Software Pentao. Das kann ganz, ganz unterschiedliche Themen annehmen. Das sind technische Themen, die wir uns anschauen, spannende Anwenderbeispiele und natürlich auch viel Methodik rund um Datenintegration und Data Warehouse. Das ist immer sehr spannend, weil Pentao ist eine Softwareplattform und man kann unheimlich viele unterschiedliche Anwendungsfälle damit implementieren. Und dass wir eigentlich jedes Jahr hier neue Dinge sehen, altbekannte Teilnehmer haben, über die wir uns natürlich sehr freuen, wenn sie uns lange die Treue halten und immer auch wieder neue Gesichter dabei haben, die über ihre Anwendungsfälle berichten. Ja, das hat ganz hat also eine gewisse Tradition. Wir machen das schon seit vielen Jahren. Und was auch eine gewisse Tradition hat, sind die berühmten Mental User Meeting Tassen. Viele von Ihnen haben vielleicht schon die Gelegenheit genutzt, diese im Rahmen der Anmeldung zu bestellen. Der ein oder andere hat vielleicht auch schon die komplette Kollektion zu Hause. Ich persönlich freue mich auf jeden Fall immer, wenn, wir beim, wenn ich beim Kunden bin und ich sehe, dass die Tassen im Einsatz sind. Das ist immer eine tolle Sache. Sollten Sie noch keine Tasse haben, aber gerne eine möchten oder eine bestellen, dann posten wir jetzt einen Link in den Chat, wo Sie gerne noch eine solche Tasse bestellen können. Im Pantower User Meeting 2022 Design. Was neben den Tassen auch noch eine Tradition hat, ist immer eine spannende Agenda an diesen Meetings. Und da möchte ich mit Ihnen jetzt auch gerne gemeinsam mal drauf schauen. Wie gesagt, wir haben immer ganz unterschiedliche Themensetzungen. Wir haben technische Vorträge. Wir haben diese Anwendervorträge, die auch natürlich immer sehr, sehr spannend sind für die Teilnehmer. Einfach mal schauen, was machen andere Anwender mit der Software? Was für Daten werden da verarbeitet? Was sind die Ergebnisse, die dort erzielt werden? Und natürlich auch das Thema ähm, Methodik, Data Warehouse und ähnliche Themen. Also schauen wir mal auf die Agenda des diesjährigen Meetings. Wir sind mittendrin. Äh, die Begrüßung läuft. Der erste Vortrag äh, wird ein technischer sein, Pentau und Kubernetes von Andres Perez. Darauf folgend äh, haben wir ein Anwenderbeispiel, wie Pentau bei der Kare Design genutzt wird, vorgestellt von dem äh, Herrn Klaus Herbrich. Daraufhin äh, ein methodischer Vortrag äh, zum Thema Data Vault von Dirk Rönsch, der dann gefolgt wird von einem weiteren Anwenderbericht. Äh, die Blechwaren Limburg äh, in Form von dem Daniel Jung und dem äh, Lukas Alpha werden berichten, wie Pentau dort eingesetzt wird. Und zu guter Letzt wird es noch ein bisschen analytischer. Da geht es auch ein bisschen ins Ökosystem, ins Datenökosystem. Und wir schauen uns an, wie man sich vom Self-Service BI zum Self-Service AI in der Kombination von Data Robot und Pentau bewegen kann und präsentiert wird hier vom Bishu Krishnan. Ja, ich glaube, da ist äh, für jeden was dabei. Äh, spannende Themen. Ich freue mich sehr auf die Agenda und die Vorträge heute und hoffe, dass wir hier einen spannenden Vormittag dann gemeinsam verbringen können. Bevor wir das tun, erlauben Sie mir noch kurz ein paar organisatorische äh, Hinweise. Wie jedes Jahr äh, werden wir die äh, Veranstaltung aufzeichnen. Und diese Aufzeichnung und auch die Folien, die gezeigt werden, sofern wir das denn dürfen, teilen wir gerne in einem Nachgangsmailing mit Ihnen. Also da können Sie dann auch gerne, wenn Sie jetzt was besonders interessiert, ähm, entsprechend das im Nach Nachgang auch noch sich anschauen und mit Ihren Kollegen teilen. Ähm, genauso, was, auch, was, was uns auch sehr wichtig ist, ist das Thema Interaktivität. Also am Ende jeder Session, die ungefähr eine halbe Stunde dauern wird, wird es die Möglichkeit geben, dass Fragen beantwortet werden von den Referenten. Sie können jederzeit gerne äh, Ihre Fragen in den Chat äh, im Zoom-Meeting hier schreiben. Wir nehmen das dann auf und dann nehmen wir uns gerne die Zeit am Ende äh, der Präsentation, dass wir die Fragen den Referenten entsprechend stellen. Also machen Sie da gerne Gebrauch von. Das ist, glaube ich, immer eine gute Möglichkeit, äh, um einfach noch mehr Erkenntnisse zu bekommen und auch Themen zu adressieren, die einen persönlich adressieren. Also ähm, Zögern Sie da nicht, den Chat entsprechend zu benutzen. Genau. So viel vielleicht auch zur Einleitung. 
Und dann würde ich sagen, gehen wir gleich äh, in Medias Res mit dem ersten Vortrag. Der wird, wie gesagt, er sich mit äh, einer spannenden neuen Technologie beschäftigen. Die Anforderung sehen wir bei ganz, ganz vielen Kunden, ähm, das auch zu, zu benutzen. Es geht um Pentau und Kubernetes. Präsentieren wird Andres Perez von der Firma Hitachi Vantara, wo er als Enterprise Architekt tätig ist. Andres wird auch Englisch präsentieren, sodass wir jetzt äh, auf Englisch umswitchen. Hello Andres, how are you? Welcome to Pentau User Meeting. So, Hello. Uh, I just mentioned you will give us an exciting uh, presentation about Pentau and Kubernetes. So something we are really looking forward to. So how to benefit from the scalability and adaptability that Kubernetes is offering and uh, how Pentau can benefit. And you will give us some kind of best practice. So what are the necessary steps for a successful deployment of Pentau and Kubernetes? So sounds really, really interesting. Um, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. And well, good morning, everyone, wherever you are in the in, in the world. So, as Stefan just said, the the our uh, the, the idea of today is to present Pentaho and Kubernetes. The the main topic will be guideline from zero to deployment stage. Okay, uh, but first of all, I want to introduce myself. And my name is Andres Perez. I'm Ben based in Madrid, Spain. I'm enterprise architect from customer success organization of Hitachi Vantara. I have been working with Pentaho for the last, I don't know, probably uh, nine to 10 years, okay? And working in many, many projects with IT Novon and many customers uh, on, on, on EMEA region. So I'm more than happy to be here and share all this information with you, okay? Let's move forward. Okay, so for today, the agenda that we will go, we will cover is Pentaho containers, okay, for the Pentaho data integration and Pentaho business analytics. What are the main objectives and of deploying Pentaho on, on containers, containers in general, but more focus on, on, on the Kubernetes engine. Uh, some of the guidelines and main consideration that we need to have in order to start our end-to-end -end approach from what you have today until getting Pentaho on, on containers and Kubernetes. A little bit of mention of the above journey, okay? How, how can Pentaho containers help you in the Kubernetes deployment as part, as part of your DevOps journey? A little bit of a slideshow demonstration. We don't have, you know, plenty amount of time to go through an end-to-end -end presentation, but yes, we will see some screenshots and some information about the different steps we need to follow for an end-to-end. -end. And I want to keep like five minutes for question on, on the audience by, by the end of the metronic transformation. So you can uh, ask whatever you need. Um, and well, the idea is to, to, to leave it clear for most of the assistants today, okay? Okay, let's start from the Pentaho containers, okay? So what are the main objectives? We, we basically focus on three main elements that we consider what are the, the main objectives when you, not just for Pentaho, but in general, when you put an application on containers, okay? Is the first one is reduce complexity. When we talk about complexity, it's complexity in the deployment, right? In more than one project, we have seen that developers are working on a, on, on a particular environment, but when they try to move to another environment, pre-production, production, test environment, no matter what, it's always complex, right? They always think that fails, always think that are not as it was when we were doing this on, on the development one. So the, what the idea of container is that we can reduce this complexity, enhancing and accelerating the deployment of the product, okay? The idea is to be reusable, okay? Once we create, we just distribute and use no matter what is the environment and what, what is the ecosystem that I'm, that I'm deploying. And it's a scalable, okay? This is one of the main fears that, that our customers are looking for. It grows and shrink as needed, okay? So whatever is the engine I'm looking for, I can have one single instance or many instances to serve and give the, 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 the solution that my customers are looking for, okay? Now talking about guidelines and main considerations, it, for us it's very important to mention what unlock features we have with Kubernetes and Pentaho particularly, okay? So we will see it from the left to the right, okay? This, this, this is for both from the Pentaho data integration perspective and the Pentaho business analytics perspective, okay? In the bottom, we have mostly uh, the Pentaho data integration capabilities and in the top, the Pentaho business analytics capabilities, but more are very related so we can, talk about it in a in a similar way. So it it's scalable, okay? So we can 
standby for an execution using, for example, card servers executions on, on Kubernetes grow and shrink, as we, as we mentioned before, you, you can define your own criteria when we will, you will scale up and when you will scale down based on your needs, okay? What, when it's considered a peak in your processing stage, when you need more resources and when you need to download to the minimums to also save money and save resources on, on that stage. One of execution, we are able to just take the resources that are needed for one single execution with kitchen or pan and then release the resources. It's cloud ready, okay? It allows us to integrate with most of the cloud elements that are available. So normally when we have Kubernetes, obviously we can deploy on-prem, but there are many, many places where we deploy on AWS, Google Cloud, Azure. So it, al it also allows to interact with all the different services and, and you are ready to go on those deployments as well. We also have load balancing capabilities. PDI and one of the enterprise features that we have for our enterprise customers is, is having Tray. Tray is a, is a load balancer that helps you to distribute the PDI workload through different card servers. Reliability, okay? In this case, we'll, we leverage on the, Penta, on, on, on the Kubernetes layer or Kubernetes flavor that you use to, to make sure that everything is up and running when you need it. And one of the things that we believe is very, very important if we have developers or people that are used to, to work in different projects at the same time is multiple version execution, right? So we can coexist with different version of the same product. We can have in development, our developers working with a certain version of Pentaho with certain plugin, certain configuration, but in a working project, in a production project, we might have a, diff a totally different version with a different configuration based on, on the needs. And with containers, we are able to isolate one from the other, okay? And, and today, as you can see in this screen, I have two red dotted squares, okay, that are pointing to the scalable standby for action and cloud ready. This is what we will focus on our slideshow for today. And before we move forward into the next slides, for us, it's very important to the, the note that I have in the, in the bottom of, of this slide is that uh, most of the customer always ask us when, from where I can, can I download the Pentaho image for, for containers, right? So this is the statement that we have from, from our support team and our engineering team is that Due to the, the various flavors of operating systems and security consideration complexity per each customer, Hitachi Ventar is not providing an official Pentaho image. But with our 9.3 release, we have a feature called uh, DocMaker that allows us to, base it on a template, we generate the image that we want, and then our customer can customize and add whatever is needed to those images. For example, uh, we have customers that prefer to deploy the product using Red Hat because Red Hat, they, they do have the license, they do have the partnership and they do prefer that all the software, no matter if it is containers or out of containers is deployed on Red Hat. We have other customers that prefers to go with Debian family or something like that. So that's why instead of, the, of, the, of, of releasing different images, we prefer to have a template image and then our customer customize this based on, on their needs, okay? Okay, now talking about what is our concept of containers with Pentaho, okay? So as you probably know, we, we do the, deliver our product. Our product has different pieces or different artifacts. The main one is the Pentaho server, but also most of our customers use the Pentaho data integration, which is a tool, the design tool that allows you to create your ETL pipelines, your jobs, your transformation. So you uh, deliver your vanilla software or those artifacts that we're talking about. And on top of that, you create your first image, okay? So let's say that the first image, the blue bubble that you have in the, in the bottom left corner, is the first image or the first container that you create on top of the vanilla software. After that, we go to the next bubble that is the yellow one, okay? Which adds the different customization adaptions that every single customer needs. For example, JDBC drivers, Hadoop configurations, very specific cloud uh, configurations related uh, things. And on top of that, another possible layer that we, we can have is the green layer, which is very specific to the project, okay? This particular project requires certain certificates, certain property files, certain credentials, and I can add on top of it. So think about it as if it was an onion, okay? Where the center is the main and what you need to start with. And then you start adding layers based on, on how many configurations 
you need or you want. So as an example, so we have the PDA client 9.3, that will be the first image based on the vanilla software. In top of it, we have PDA client GCP. This just tells us that is an, an adaption of my PDA client, but to work on GCP. And then I have PDA project X, okay? That just add in top of this GCP image, certain certificates, certain properties that are definitely required for a particular project, but not required for the entire GCP uh, deployment, okay? Now let's talk a little bit about the DevOps journey, okay? So what, wh why, why is important the Pentaho containers on a DevOps journey? Basically, as you can see here, this is a very simple and, 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 and summarized version of a DevOps journey, okay? So in the left, we have what tools we used to, we used to have. We have Git to handle all our code, all the jobs and transformation code and share across the different developers. We have the product by itself, right? This PDI. So normally our, our developers, data science, whatever you wanna call it, have the Pentaho data integration on their, on their local machine, okay? And the way they triggers the process and how they test the developments is, 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 a, is a manual effort, right? So everything is locally. But once I move to upper environments, okay? It can be test environment, QA, pre-prod, okay? Everything starts to, needs to be a little bit more automatic, right? So everything that I run on my QA environment, for example, we, we do have a tag from that Git repository where I have all my Pentaho de de, uh, developments. Additionally to that, I can have different Pentaho version based on the project because each of them were created in a different time and with different needs. So I probably need to get certain functionalities for certain products. And when we move to production, we also have a similar approach, right? So here is why we believe that the Pentaho and containers is very benefit and how you can add this to the pipelines you have for continuous integration to integrate with all your end-to-end -end pipeline for, for deployment perspective, okay? Now let's get into let's get into materia. Okay, the idea is that we go to a to a demonstration. As I said, it's an slideshow. It's not a, an online demonstration. The idea is to uh, we, I already took some screenshot about the end-to-end -end process. It's, it's it's a little bit hard to do it online. So in terms of time, I do prefer to to keep it on this way. Okay, so let's start from from the use case description. Okay, just to focus and, and make sure that we know what we are looking for. Okay, we have a customer and their IT department needs to execute in parallel several ETL processes within a scalable and reliable cloud-based architecture architecture with Google Kubernetes. Okay, so this is a very simple architecture diagram, or yes, I will, I will call it architecture diagram of how everything is deployed. But additionally, what element needs to be part of my solution? So as I can see. The main thing is that I'm in the Google Cloud ecosystem. So everything needs to be executed on Google Cloud. The data in input and output is also located on Google Cloud. My input are a set of CSV files that are not organized, that doesn't have the structure that I need, okay? And I need to mix all that CSV information and produce a Navro output with the proper schema and the format of the data that is required for the next process to be able to handle it, okay? Additionally on this, obviously what the customer wants and the IT department wants is that this is scale as much as I can, okay? It has to be part of, the, of their Kubernetes environment. So for now and for demonstration purposes, we are using a fixed number of card servers, okay, with, with our PDI engine and, and fixed number of three servers that are that are running. And in top of them, we have a load balancer that I speak in the in the previous uh, slides that is Trey. And all my communication, all my requests to, to the Kettle engine will be using my, my load balancer. And load balancer will be the one that decides where this particular pipeline or where this particular logic has to be executed from those replicas that I have of, of, my, of my Pentaho appliance, okay? So as you can see here, um, my image, my, my Pentaho image, my container image is, is stored on the container registry, right? So I need to store it there in order to be able to trigger and launch uh, a workload on my Kubernetes environment. I do have not just the Pentaho instances, but I also have many other workloads that are running there, many other services of the IT department. So I need to be 
sure that we can live on that ecosystem. And as I said, he, this is the input, the CSV, several CSV files. I need to process those with Pentaho. Those are placed on the Google Cloud Storage bucket. And once I'm done, once I merge all the information, once I apply all the business logic, I'm going to produce an Avro file, and that Avro file will have the information that the IT department needs to move forward. Okay. So these are, in general, the steps to follow. Okay. Uh, obviously, we are we are we are doing like a like a fast forward. Okay. In the in in our demonstration today, but in general, there are there these are the four steps that you need to do from zero to having your product and your solution running on, on Kubernetes. The first one is building, build your image, create your Pentaho image based on your required customization. If we go back and remember the onion layer that we were talking about on that slide, we need to create as many customization and as many layers that we need to have our container available, okay, for, for our deployment. After that, we need to perform all the configuration is the configure step, the second one, which is I need to set up and prepare all the different elements required in the Kubernetes ecosystem and make sure that I have everything to deploy what I need. Okay, remember that on Kubernetes, the way we interact, we have certain particular commands and we also have manifest. Manifests are the definitions of how what I what I want to do what I what I want to deploy on my Kubernetes engine and I need to make sure that I have the proper elements for for Pentaho to deploy it on on the Kubernetes engine. The second one is the execution by itself. Okay, so is sorry sorry my my mistake. The third one is the deployment. So now that I now have my images, I have all the configuration I need. I need to deploy those those to the to the to the Kubernetes engine, okay? So deploy all the service to my cluster. And the last but, but most important step because it's the one that really gonna perform what I want is the execution, okay? Now that I have everything up and running on my, on my cluster, I can execute and interact with Pentaho and monitor all the execution and all the processes that are being running, okay? So let's, let's move to the first step, okay? So, as I mentioned, the two elements that are important here for, for our use case resolution is we need to have the Pentaho data integration. In this case, we are creating two layers of images, one that just contain the vanilla software, and the second one is an adaption of that vanilla software for the GCP ecosystem. What I mean with the ecosystem, GCP ecosystem? Well, as you probably know, Pentaho is able to connect with multiple um, BFS, protocols. One of them is, for example, the Google Cloud Storage protocol. And I'm adding here some of the credentials that has to be used for this project in order to read and write to that Google Cloud Storage bucket. Okay, So that's the customization and adding to the vanilla software, adding the libraries that are required to interact with, the, with, with this bucket. And the second one that I also mentioned in the previous slides, I have a trace server. My trace server will be responsible to do the load balancing of those Pentaho data integration card, card servers and make sure that I properly distribute the load and I always use the resources in the right way. As I mentioned, our deployment will be a replicas of three. So I will have three services of Pentaho running and trace server balancing the information across it. I just wanted to, even that we are not executing all these comments today, I just want to put in front of you, what are the comments that we are doing, okay, in order to create those images and prepare everything, okay? So the first step is I need to build the default PDI layers and tray, okay? This is the first to command in Docker. And the third one, which is the, the number, the command number five in this list is, okay, now that I have the base, now, now that I have my vanilla software as part of a container image, now I'm creating that adaption or customization to the GCP ecosystem. And that's where I call it PDI client GCP instance. In this case, we are working with the latest version of Pentaho, the 9.3. After I, I do have my images, all of those are locally, okay? No matter when I'm, when I'm uh, preparing and developing this pipeline are local, but now as this will be executed on Google Cloud and is Google Kubernetes Engine, I need to make sure that all of these artifacts are present on my container registry, okay? As I said, it's just a demonstration. In this case, it's the Google Kubernetes registry. And I put the, the, the first step that we do is we tag both um, images, okay? 
to be recognized inside of the of, of the Google Kubernetes registry. And at the end, the last step is to push the actual images to the to the corresponding path on my on my uh, container registry. Okay. Second step, as I said, now we need to create and configure all the required manifests to apply this configuration in Kubernetes. So I need to make sure that I have the proper manifest for the PDI card server. I also need to have a network service, right? How I'm going to interact with, with the card service and how internally it will have communication with the trace server. I do need to have the trace server deployment manifest, but also the network service because the trace server in this case will be the one that has access from outside of the cluster. I'm going to interact with it in order to ask for execution of the different elements. And additionally, we always have secrets and conflict maps necessary for, for the execution of my of my Pentaho. What, what do we have on the secrets? For example, and here we, you, you can have it, you can see it on the list. You can have the Pentaho license, okay? You know that our product requires a license to be executed. You probably need a key, a JSON key from Google Cloud in order to interact with the services. So you can also add it as a secret. And additionally to that, we have the manifest for the for the deployment of the Pentaho data integration and tray into those uh, into those uh, into my cluster. Okay. Third step. Okay. Now it's time to execute and monitor. Okay. So once I execute my 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 pipelines. Okay. Now I, now that I know that my manifests are applied, I need to check that my service is up and running in my Kubernetes cluster. So these are just a screenshot from, from, the, from the dashboard, okay, of, of, of Google Kubernetes. And basically I see that I have two services up and running, right? One is the PDI card server and the other one is Tray. I see that the PDI card server has three nodes or three replicas that are up and running and available. And just a small screenshot of how the CPU and memory is going up from one to three, re three replicas, okay? So it starts from zero and it goes up until it gets all the resources from the CPU and memory perspective for us to, to execute. So once I see this, everything is green, I'm able to move forward. So now I'm able to execute and start uh, monitoring my services. The way we are interacting with, uh, with our cluster, as I said, is we are communicating everything with our Tray service. The way we interact with Tray is very similar to what, how we interact with Card. In this, in this case, we are using the REST API and we are executing almost in parallel around 20 parallel pipelines, okay? That are the ones that our IT department requires, okay? They need to, to process, as, as, as if you remember, several CSV files, and convert it to Avro once the data is joined, clean and apply the different business transformations that are, that are required. Okay, so this is an example of the command, okay? How uh, using curl, obviously you can use whatever is the, the method that you prefer. And once I, obviously we change the path of where is the job that I wanna execute, I just put an example here and I execute the 20 of them in parallel to be processed in the Kubernetes cluster, okay? Once I, um, I execute everything, here are a couple of screenshots from, from the tray service. In the top right, you can see the workers. So you see that we have three elements associated with cards, okay? So those are the three card servers. It tell, tell us what when was the last time that it communicates with it, uh, if it's commissioned or not. So if it's able to handle requests, how many how many work it was launched for to that particular instance? As you can see, it wasn't equal. Okay, so the the amount of processes that were executed in the first server and the other two are not the same. Basically, it it means because based on the rule that Trey has, it recognized that the amount of processes that were executed in the other two nodes were bigger or heaviest and requires more resources. So it decided to execute more in the first one than in the other. None of them has failed in the execution. And here we can see a list of all the elements that were executed. We can access the logs of all of those execution, retrieve the information we need, but also, and more important, we can also monitor all of this from our Kubernetes engine login uh, system, okay? Now, as you can see, uh, after the execution, we start from, 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 a, from a graph where I was not using any amount of resources. And as you can see here, after the execution, there are th these 
small pikes that you see here on the, on the charts, you see that it starts to take a little bit more memory, a little bit more CPU, obviously not as much as we require because we have a very uh, large cluster here for, for this demonstration. But you can see that after that execution, the CPU went almost to zero. The amount of memory reduced a lot, not to zero. Remember that uh, Pentaho requires certain memory to be up and running. So that's why we keep it as a minimum, but not zero completely, OK? And this is this is the end of the demonstration, OK? So basically, we we saw that is, is we are able to move from and a standard deployment of Pentaho, okay, and a standard release of Pentaho mm -hmm. to have it deployed on Kubernetes. And I, what I really want to take is the the rest of the rest of the session to take questions and try to answer to for for the answer, for the audience. So uh, I don't know if in if if we have something in the chat already. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and see what we have on the on the chat, okay. Okay, so thank you for the very interesting presentation. Um, yes, so if anybody would like to ask a question, please use uh, the chat, and I will I, I will ask it. Uh, meanwhile, I, I I have some questions. Um, sure, sure. So uh, could you please say uh, so one question would be so, in a nutshell, can you give us the the benefits of doing it? So. I, I know you mentioned at the beginning, but in a nutshell, so where are the advantages compared to the standard installation? So this would be yeah. something interesting to for wrap up. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, I will say that the two biggest uh, benefits of using Pentahon containers is the scalability is one mm -hmm. of them. So you are able to uh, scale from very little use cases to grow until whatever you need. Obviously, you have a limit. The, the amount of, of licenses and amount of resources that you have will be your limit, but you are able to scale and let's say pay for what you need in terms of resources, right? And not having to use all the resources all the time. Normally when we are in a in a in an on-prem deployment, in a regular deployment, if you will be using, I don't know, 32 gigs of RAM and eight CPUs for Pentaho, you need to have it set it up and ready all the time, no matter if you're using the product or not. With this kind of deployment, you can define where are your limits, define what is your criteria and start grow or shrink, as I mentioned, based on, on that. And the second one, okay, this is from the scalable point of view, I will say that reliable point of view is also important. Uh, Kubernetes allows to, no matter what, it, if it fails, it recovers almost immediately. It gives you certain load balancing capabilities. It gives you all the elements that you need to monitor your system and integrate with all the other elements. So I will say that for me, those two are very important and can be considered the main two objectives of Pentahound containers. Perfect. So uh, Mr. Fabricius, if you, I see you raise your hand. If you have a question, please put it in the chat. Uh, I have another one. So yes. of course, yeah, there, are, there are huge benefits. Yeah? And so this is, uh, this, this is really great. So if you're a data engineer or a data engineering team and you are facing you know, the requirements you mentioned in your example at the beginning, so do you have any recommend, recommendations how to get started? So how to, how to get things up and running? So where can you get the information and, and things like this? So what, what's your recommendation on this? Well, my first recommendation is that obviously the Kubernetes deployment is not a single effort, so it should not be like a like a project that we put on Kubernetes. It should be more like a like a deployment pattern for the entire organization. So as much people is involved, but also following the same practices, easiest will be to interact with this. We have customers that have wants to have. Uh, Pentahon containers, but they don't even have the skills on containers. They don't even know what is Kubernetes. And I do believe that even that it sounds like obvious, you need to have the proper knowledge and the capacity internally to understand how to manage and handle a Kubernetes engine. Now that's from the from the generic point of view. From the Pentaho point of view, I can uh, I can share. Obviously, I, I don't have it on on my slides, but I can find a way to 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 make it available for you, and you can redistribute to the to the attendees. Uh, we do have not just uh, uh, some documentation on how to start building those those images, but also some templates 
and an element that you can use and configure for, for, for your benefit, okay? So that probably will be the entry point that I will recommend for, for all our customers that are looking for Pentaho on containers. Yeah, sounds good. So I think we can share this uh, to the audience. So uh, when, when, when we send out the presentation afterwards, yeah, so that uh, we can add some links uh, to the examples. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna make right? sure I'm going to make sure that we have the links on the on one of the slides of the presentation. It's not currently, so this version doesn't have those links. But after the QA, I will I will add the slide with the links that we believe are are required and and benefit for everyone who wants to start with Pentahon containers. Okay, great. So one moment, uh, Herr Gelb, Sie haben auch die uh, die Hand gehoben. Könnten, wenn Sie eine Frage haben, gerne gerne in den Chat. Uh, kurz schreiben, dann stelle ich sie. Wir haben sonst keine Audiofunktion. So one moment. I'm not. I think there's another question. So what uh, we have to wait. So. Okay. So Jens Juncker, another question. So please write into the chat. So uh, this would be great. Okay, but we will definitely do this. So uh, if you share the links, uh, we will add it on, on your slide deck and uh, then we can send it out later. Right? So I think this would yeah. be really helpful. Yeah? So uh, because uh, this you know, accelerates uh, the experience. Absolutely. Okay, so no more questions, obviously. Uh, Andres, thank you for your presentation. So this was really, really interesting and yeah. See you soon and uh, yeah, hopefully on, on the next user meeting latest. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much for everyone. Thank you for your for for your patience. Thank you for being here. And let's enjoy the rest of the presentations. Okay. Vielen Dank. Okay.